Another week has gone by and I have missed you. It's been a wonderful, wonderful week. So uh, let's start with what is cool and exciting. Uh, by the way, if I haven't said it, welcome to What's Up Wednesday. I've got this like up here new angle. So if it looks weird, uh, just put it in the comments. Tell me it looks weird. Um, so this week, it's been great. Um, this weekend, my older brother, decided that he had enough of the uh, military life and called it quits, or as they like to say, retired, you know, at a ripe young age. Um, so that was fun. I got to go up to Pensacola, Florida and see that spot. So any of you watching this from Pensacola, Florida, man, you've got a phenomenal location over there. And uh, it was windy and I did not kite and I regret it, but I had fun, I had family. Uh, so that kind of brings me to my What's Up Wednesday personal topic is family time. Family time is super, super important. And uh, I hope I don't feel too preachy here. But as kite surfers, when the wind starts to blow, you know what happens. We all run out the door, right? And sometimes we forget about that family. And uh, when we get back, you know, life happens. So make sure that you plan accordingly. The people who love and support you will always love and support you. But uh, show them a little extra love after you get that, you know, weekend long furlough to go kiteboarding. So, I had a good time. Got to catch up with friends and family that I hadn't seen in a while. Enjoy some beach time with no kiting. And uh, I must say, it was relaxing. But I've been back at work Monday, Tuesday, and today, of course, doing a little reorganization here inside the shop. And um, we got lots of cool stuff, lots of new toys, and I'm going to show you some of those toys uh, today in today's episode of Tech Talk. Normally I'd have like sound effects, but hey, look, cheap production, you get what you pay for, right? Um, so that will bring me to my next segment. A lot of people uh, like to surf, and so they get into kite surfing, and then they get on twin tips, and then they spend their life on twin tips and never really get back into a surfboard. And then there's some people who have never surfed, and they want to learn how to surf. They want a directional board, but don't really know what to pick or how to start. So we're gonna go over some of those basics today. Um, this is not by any means like a comprehensive view. I try to pack in a lot of stuff for you guys in 10 minutes, and that's not that easy. So we've got a cool little lineup over here, you can see, uh, of some North boards. And one of our favorite brands for surfboards, they've just got a bunch of stuff um, to play with. So they've got a lot of different designs. You can go onto our website and just check out the surfboard section or go on to northkites.com and, and look at all their, their products. The two woo, that I'm gonna talk to you guys about today are the Whip and the Nugget. The Whip and the Nugget sit on completely opposite sides, completely opposite sides of uh, your using range, I guess you could say. And so they're actually really good boards to have in your quiver whether or not you want one or two boards, right? So, the North Whip. The North Whip is called a compact shape design. Compact. Compact meaning small. You don't need that big pointy nose because it doesn't do much for us as kiteboarders. Uh, I'm sure some of you surfers out there are gonna, you know, go in the comments and tell me how wrong I am. But I can tell you, I've been riding these for a couple of years now and I really like it. The other nice thing about a compact surf design is, as you can see, the rails are kind of parallel. They're more parallel than a standard surfboard. And to give you an idea, I might just run off camera and get one. But until then, I'm going to go over what's new. So those of you familiar with the whip, you know that in the past it was an actual standard surf design, right? And then they went to this compact surf design and it's been a great board. Lots of volume underfoot, so it's a great board to start with and it's a good board to progress with. What they've changed for 2017 is nothing short of magical. My last board I had with North as a demo was my, um, my Pro Series, which was a fun, lively board. It was a little narrower, just a little quicker and carving and snappier. And that's why I went from the previous year's whip, because the whip was fun, it was nice, it was a great surfboard, but it did feel a little locked in, uh, a little too much volume for, for my like, even in the smaller sizes, but, what they've done this year is phenomenal. They've added a lot more width in the tail, that real cool classic swallow tail. And so it's just a, a fun, lively, snappy board. It's great in small waves. It works good in bigger waves. 
And uh, if you're going to go, you know, kill one eye Mauritius or, you know, go out to Maui, maybe you want something a little bit more purpose built for those big kind of waves. But for most of our wave riding that we do as kiteboarders, this kind of shape and this board in particular will really, really, really help you. And you'll love it. The other nice thing about these boards is they fly upwind. So you can really just take a board, ride it just like you would a twin tip, but then it's also a surfboard. Magical. Magical. Okay. Um, some of the other nice things they did, this is a thruster design. If anybody's not familiar with the difference is, thruster design is a three fin setup. Typically gives you a little bit better tracking, um, a little bit more control, and longer cars. So you can really lay into the power and, and really, you know, just put a lot of power on the rail and the tail and come around in a nice smooth arc. Versus a quad design, which I'll show you in a little bit. Quad designs are typically a little faster, a little looser, and they're snappier. So you can really kind of break the back end loose because the, the fins are set up in a uh, parallel setting in fours. Okay? Um, so that is the North Whip Compact Surf shape, and it's a beautiful, wonderful board, and I like it. Is light too strong a board? I love it! Okay, the next one is the North Whip. I already said that. Just making sure you're paying attention. This is the nugget. The nugget is exactly that. This is a basically a potato chip style board. This works in light winds. It works for small mushy waves, strapped, strapless. It doesn't care. It can take whatever you throw at it. They come in a couple different sizes. 411 is this size. You can check out the website if you want all the sizes. Like I said, I'm not going to get too techy on you. What I like about this board, the 411 size is still nice, wide, thick, and it fits into a bag. So you can take this wherever you go and you will be happy. This is that quad design. You can even see it's got a really nice spine that runs down the middle. It's a double concave. Makes the board just really, here let me try to get it. There you go. Makes it just really, really nice rail to rail. Um, and then the quad design makes it a fast board but it can still get nice and snappy if you need to. This is a fun board for those light days where you're maybe on a 14 meter wave kite or a 12 meter wave kite. We actually took it out yesterday in about 13, 14 miles an hour and uh, I had an 11 meter uh, Neo from North and it was a great combination. So this is a fun, fun, fun board for those light wind days or for the days you just wanna kinda just pump around strapless in flat water. Um, it is definitely not a speed board, it is definitely not a big wave board, but it is a lot of fun. So that is the North Nugget. Nugget, Nugget. All right, so you may be asking yourself, all right, that was a great presentation, Ramon, but what does that mean for me? Um, if you're a brand new directional rider, what you really want is a board that has plenty of volume where you need it, just kind of in the middle of the board. So your feet can dance around, there's no particular spot that you have to be at based on the wave and the speed and everything else. So it gives you a little bit more margin of error. So a nice board like the Whip is gonna give you that exact thing. A lot of the volume is right here where you need it, right in the middle, not the nose, and it's got a little more volume in the tail so it really can track up wind well. If you're more experienced of a rider, what you probably are looking for is something that can really drive down the line, feel more like a surfboard, and, uh, and really get those nice turns in. And that's where this year's Whip really can kind of act as that double you know, uh, agent, we'll say. Oops, I think that's someone else's board. Um, because it really is a nice performance board. Like I said, I came from the Pro Series last year, and although I loved it, it was a great board, um, the Whip is almost as good as that board was, and it's got inserts for foot straps. Yes, I use foot straps. Probably your next question. When do I use foot straps, Roman? Am I a big baby for using foot straps, Roman? Hey, I only do strapless airs, Roman. You might be asking all of those questions and more. Hold on. Is the nugget faster because it's red? Yes, by the way, Ben Skaggs. It is faster because it's red. The green ones, you catch more air. So that's just a, a technical thing that, you know, down at North Sports they like to they like to do. Um, so where, where I was going with that is um, if you are a more advanced rider, you can go strapped or strapless. No one cares. And if they do, go tell your mom. They're not being nice. They're being bullies. For me, my personal preference is, guess what? 
whatever's working at the moment. If it's double overhead and pumping 30 miles an hour and the ocean's kind of angry out there, I'm gonna put straps on because I don't feel like swimming in. I feel like attacking the wave a little bit. If I'm on a downwinder and it's a beautiful spring break day and there's lots of Bettys on the, on the beach checking me out, okay, that usually doesn't happen, but if it did, then maybe I wanna do some jumps. Maybe I wanna do some air tricks and these boards can take it. I know Ben's listening, but yes, I jump my boards. They've lasted, they've done great. And I want to experience that part of our sport. That part of our sport is awesome, man. It's the only for board sport that you can fly, so why not fly? So that's why I ride straps. But yesterday, 14 miles an hour, 11 meter Neo, and the beautiful super fast nugget. And I didn't use straps because there was no need. The waves were nice. I was just kind of having a soul session, just surfing, barefoot, switching feet, doing all the things that we do barefoot. And uh, I loved it. So the moral to that story, that very long winded story is ride whatever you want. Okay, strapped, strapless, doesn't matter, okay? And that's surfboards in a nutshell. Get a small one for big waves, big one for light wind, pretty easy, right? Um, that brings me to our most favorite, favorite part of the whole day, is our product highlight. Yes, I know I've been talking about boards, but that was just our tech segment today. Product highlight, and I've got one for you. Hold on one second. This! is a product that we've really grown to like. In fact, I think I'm a little biased because I bought it early on in my kiteboarding career and it is a kite fix kit. Boom, boom, boom. So if you've ever broken your gear and had to wait for a repair, you know how much that stinks. If you've ever broken your gear and not had anything to fix it, you know that stinks. So this kit will actually contain just about everything you need to get you back in on the water again. It's got a cool sticker. I don't know what that's for. Permanent kite repair. Oh, a lost board sticker. Hey, look at that. You can put it out on your board, right? Uh, it's got a bladder patch. So if you need to actually patch a large portion, something bigger than tear aid is gonna, gonna use, then you can use that, right? Uh, it's got baby powder. I just use this to make me feel baby fresh before I go out after a downwinder, right? It's got this really cool fiber fix. Um, it's, hard to, it's hard to see here, but fiber fix is exactly that. It's like a fiber. You put their glue fix over it, and it can repair basically anything. You tear your kite in half, you can probably fiber fix it. All right. It's got a bunch of different rips, uh, rip stop, um, Dacron. So lots and lots of sail tape. You can pretty much fix just about any pinholes, canopy tears, that kind of thing with that, right? Got a pair of scissors. You always need scissors. Nobody ever has scissors. By the way, don't throw scissors. Uh, zip ties, you can't have enough zip ties. A pin, L look at that man, it's a pin. Yes, I'm, st I'm not even at the bottom yet. Two things of glue fix. This can fix just about anything, and I'm sure everybody over at Kite Fix can uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but this stuff is basically, uh, I don't know, like glue for everything, you know? Your buddy won't shut up and you want to glue him down to his seat, glue him down to his seat. But it works great on wetsuits, kites, valves. Uh, you could probably patch a bladder if you had to. So this is really good all-purpose glue, but it also works with their fiber fix. All right, glue, glue. There is a plastic bag. I've always wondered what this is, but I think it's kind of like to push things down or get things to seal. I should read the instructions, but you can do that when you buy it. And of course, speaking of instructions, it's got instructions and a nice sealed container. So if you bought yours back in 2008, like I did, it's still good because it's sitting in the back of your car. So this wraps up another phenomenal, phenomenal. Oh, what's up Wednesday? I'm taking you off my tripod. Ah. This wraps up another wonderful What's Up Wednesday, and I'm really happy that you guys joined me. I was gonna show you a sunset. I don't know if it's any good, so just walk with me, okay? Let's see if we've got any sunset going on. Lock the door. No, sunset's gone, guys. So, sorry, it's another beautiful day here in Cocoa Beach. Thank you for joining. See you guys later. Bye, Dwayne.